Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Good evening. Hello. So we are uh, going to start the day number four, and we are going to end the second week. So we are going to have just two more weeks in this course. So we are in the middle of the course. So in, I can even say in how fast the time is going because it's going to be very, very fast because in a couple of days we are going to end the, uh, the course and it is like something very, very, um, very amazing we can say. So we are going to start the session number four for this week, that is the week number two. We are going to have two topics. Uh, one is a model verb will and will for a request. So in that case, we are going to uh, talk about how can we use these model verbs uh, to make requests. And also we are going to have a vocabulary. We are going to um, create a vocabulary uh, related to geography. So we are going to have like an explanation and then we are going to have a vocabulary. We are going to construct this vocabulary and we are going to uh, learn a specific words related to geography. So we are going to start presenting the document in which we are going to develop the topic. And we are going to start with the model verb will and will for a request. So we are going to see how to use them uh, when we are making requests. And also we are going to see uh, some examples and all of that. This is a very short topic. So in this case, we are not going to have a lot of information. We are going to have just general information about wheel and about wool. And also we are going to have some examples for those um, model birds. And then we are going to have a list of uh, a vocabulary. In this case, we're not going to write the whole vocabulary, I guess, because um, it's kind of long. But in that case, we are going to have uh, three parts in the vocabulary. First is the uh, English word, then the meaning, and the third uh, part is the Spanish meaning. Así que para la sesión de hoy, vamos a tener dos temas. Uno que tiene que ver con los modal verbs, Eh, donde vamos a hablar de la explicación de cómo se utilizan para los requests, eh, ejemplos y todo eso. Y luego vamos a empezar a escribir un vocabulario que tiene que ver con geografía. Eh, vamos a tener tres partes, la palabra en inglés, el significado y, el, eh, y el, eh, la palabra en español. ¿verdad? Entonces vamos a empezar con eso. So. We have model verbs will and will for a request. That is the first topic that we are going to develop right now. So we are going to begin with the use of will. Will is the first model verb that we are going to develop right now. So it says using will to make requests. And it says, will is the auxiliary for the future simple. But can also be used when requesting someone to do something. So in that case, we are going to use this uh, auxiliary that we use for the future simple to uh, request 
someone to do something for us. So in that case, we are going to have like two uses for um, this uh, auxiliary. It is important to bear in mind that we is a more casual way of making the request than using their conditional. So in this case, it's saying that when we are using will is more formal than conditional. So we have some examples of uh, using will for making requests. And we have the list of examples. So let me see. I'm going to use this one. So we have the first example and it says, will you close the door, please? Will you close the door, please? So we are asking uh, for something. Podría cerrar la puerta, por favor? Entonces le estamos haciendo como o pidiendo eh, algo a esa persona. En este caso es cerrar la puerta. Will you close the door, please? Then we have another example, and it says, Would you help me cook dinner, please? Will you help me cook the dinner, please? So in that case, uh, we are uh, asking for help uh, making something. Then we have another example, and it says, will he do his homework before we go out, please? So in that case, we have the auxiliary wheel for making requests. In that case, we are asking people to do something for us or do something in particular. So in that case, we are using this. In, in, in this case, it's not like uh, we are talking about just the future because in the tense or the uh, structure for the uh, future simple, we are using uh, this uh, auxiliary to make sentences in which we are talking about the future and things that we want to happen in future. So in this case, it's for asking uh, for something that we need in, in that moment. And it says that will can also be used in a similar uh, fashion to can when requesting someone to do something. En este caso, cuando utilizamos el auxiliar will, es como que también estuviéramos utilizando el, el auxiliar can. Porque eh, estamos pidiendo eh, que se haga algo. ¿Podrías o puedes eh, cerrar la puerta? Can you please close the door? Puedes cerrar la puerta. It's, eh, it has like a very, very, um, Similar use in that case, will and can.
to do something. And now that we know that uh, we use, or how can we use the uh, auxiliary wheel, we are going to uh, see the other word that is wool, and how can we use it for a uh, requesting? So in that case, we are going to see the information and some examples because this is a very short um, topic. So we are going to end the topic with the word wool. That is very short. In this, this case, we are going to use wool. And let me move this because it's not, it's not okay. So give me a moment. Okay, I think it's better. So, in this case, we are going to know uh, how to use the word wool to make request also because we uh, already saw the use of wheel. So, in this case, it says wool is the auxiliary verb in conditional, but may also be used when we make requests in English. Unlike wheel, using wool is a much more polite way to make requests to someone in English. So we were saying that wheel is a more casual. So in that case, we are going to use wheel for people that we uh, already know. In this case, when we are using wool, that is very polite. And um, in that case, we are going to use it with people that we uh, maybe um, don't know or don't have any like, we are not very familiar with, with them. So in this case, it's very, very polite or very formal in some cases. So we have here the information about the use of wool. So we have now the examples. And it says, would you close the door, please? That is the same sentence that we were using with wheel. So in this case, it's not like it's going to change uh, the meaning of the sentence or it's going to change the um, something in, in that situation. It is just like making the uh, sentence uh, casual or uh, polite or more formal or more serious. So in that case, it's not going to change the meaning of the sentence or the structure of the sentence. In that case, it's just to 
make it more formal or make it a more casual. So in that case, it's not like it's, uh, we are going to change everything in the sentence if we use will or if we use will. So in that case, it's not like that. Así que si utilizamos, pueden ser las mismas oraciones, así como en los primeros ejemplos, vamos a volver a escribirlo, solo que con will, en este caso no va a cambiar el significado, no va a haber ningún cambio en nuestra, en, en nuestra oración. Lo único que va a cambiar es que si lo hacemos con will, es para utilizarlo de una manera más casual, con personas que ya conocemos, que somos familiares eh, de, eh, con ellos, o sea, que ya tenemos como una conexión, una relación, aunque sea de amistad. Pero si lo hacemos con will, es para hacerlo un poco más formal, cuando somos compañeros de trabajo, con los que no tenemos mucha confianza, eh, o personas que estamos conociendo. Es el único cambio que se va a dar, no va a cambiar nada más en la oración. Next one, would you help me cook dinner? Next one, we have, will he do his homework before we go out, please? So in that case, it's the same sentences, just we are changing the modal verb that we are using. So we have a question here and it says, what is the best one to use? What is best, will or will? So we are going to see what is the best uh, auxiliary to use in this case. And it says you can obviously use will and will at your discretion. Also, it is much more recommendable to use will when you are making requests to people who you are not familiar with. Um, will will be more with people who you have a comparable common relationship with. So, estamos diciendo en este caso que esto queda a discreción, ¿verdad? Dependiendo del uso que ustedes le quieran dar, ustedes lo usan de la manera que ustedes consideren mejor. Pero es mejor o más recomendable utilizar Google cuando estamos conociendo a las personas, cuando no tenemos confianza y queremos sonar un poco más eh, formales, ¿verdad? Más respetuosos en ese caso. Y si ya somos, eh, ya tenemos una relación o ya nos conocemos, nos llevamos bien, podemos utilizar Will. Pero en este caso es preferencia. ¿Qué preferimos nosotros? If we prefer to use will, we can use will. If we prefer to use will, you can use will. That is okay. It's not a big deal using will or using will. They are the same thing, just the connotation of the, uh, the model verb in that case.
So there are the specifications for the use of will and rule when making a request. And that is the uh, ending part of that topic. Es un tema bastante sencillo, bastante corto, así que no nos íbamos a llevar mucho tiempo en hablar de will and will making requests because they are very uh, simple to understand that we have um, two options. That is the, the best way to say it. We have two options to uh, use these uh, kind of words when we are making requests. And that's very, very simple. In that case, you can see that we have some questions and a question that you can make without seeing a, um, an instructor. So in that case, it's not like we have like a specific structure, but you can see that uh, you have the auxiliary at the beginning, then you have the subject, then you have the verb, and then you have the complement. That is very, very simple structure. Así que para crear este tipo de preguntas con will y con will, ustedes lo único que tienen que hacer es utilizar el auxiliar al principio de su oración, más el sujeto, luego ponen el verbo y luego todo su complemento y la question mark. Y ya tienen su pregunta. So in that case, it's depending on how you feel making those questions and with the people, people that you are using those questions. So in that case, it's not like we are going to have a lot of information about this topic. So it is very, very short. So now we are going to change from a model verb to vocabulary. Now we are going to create a vocabulary related to Geography. Vamos a crear un vocabulario que tiene que ver con geografía. Vamos a aprender palabras que tienen que ver con el tema de geografía en inglés, su significado y su traducción al español. So I will create a table in which we are going to have three parts. The first one is the English word, the second one the meaning, and the third one is the translation into Spanish because it's better for us to understand the meaning of those words. So um, today we are going to uh, see the vocabulary and on Monday, that is the next session, we are going to use those words to create sentences or statements that we can use for um, a conversation. So now we're going to see the vocabulary and on Monday, we are going to use those words or uh, the vocabulary that we are going to create to um, create a statement when we are talking about some uh, topics related to geography. So we are going to start and I'm going to create the table. I'm going to have. I'm going to write 20, I guess, for the first part. So we have here the first, um, I am not writing the topic, what is this? So the first thing, the topic, and it's geography vocabulary. It says that it's very, very important that we create this kind of vocabulary because um, we are gaining words that we can use in a, a conversation. And also, if we have a lot of words that we can use, uh, we are going to make our conversation more, more fluently. So in that case, it's very, very necessary that we create different vocabularies um, about all of the topics that we have, uh, for example, food, uh, we have sports, clothes, animals, um, vegetables, uh, colors, um, things, uh, materials, and all other things, because we can add those words 
to our vocabulary. And if we have uh, this kind of uh, vocabulary and we learn those words, we are going to use a different words when we are uh, talking with someone and it's going to be very, very interesting in the conversation. So for that reason, it's very important that we create vocabulary when we are in the learning process of this new language. Así que es bastante, bastante necesario que nosotros vayamos creando vocabularios eh, cuando estamos aprendiendo un nuevo idioma, independientemente del idioma que sea, porque esto nos ayuda a nosotros a crear nuestro eh, banco de datos o base de datos de, de, del lenguaje, ¿verdad? Creamos una base donde tenemos todas nuestras palabras nuevas y que las vamos a ir involucrando en las conversaciones que vayamos teniendo, dependiendo del tema en el que estemos eh, tratando. So, the first word we have here, atmosphere. We have atmosphere, and the meaning is the envelope of gases surrounding any celestial body. Here's some different interpretation of the word. And in Spanish, I, I think that is kind of um, easy to interpret this word. So atmosphere in Spanish is atmosfera. It's very simple and very easy. Next, aurora. And I'm going to write the same because it has the same um, it's written in the same way, so the pronunciation is kind of different. And it says that this one is a band of light caused by church solar particles. And we have the number three, and it says basin. So this one is a depression. In this case, we are not talking about feeling. It's a depression or a deep in the earth's surface. And in Spanish, we can translate it as cuenca. Then we have bay. So this one means an indentation of a short line is smaller than a goal. And this one means Bahia. By a sphere.
It means the region In Spanish, we have the Ostra. So here we have just five, five words, and we are talking about the atmosphere, we are talking about Aurora, based in a very in a biosphere or biosphere. So in that case, we are going to have like a um, kind of long list in which we are going to see these words. And in some cases, we're not going to have like very, very common words because in this case, it's to learn new vocabulary that we can use when we are talking about the geography or the air. You can may think that in which cases we are going to use this vocabulary, but in um, in everyday communication, uh, sometimes you have to talk about Earth, or you are going to talk about the universe, or you are going to talk about some uh, topics related to um, geography. So in that case, it's necessary that you have this kind of vocabulary because you don't know in which cases you are going to use these words. So in this case, you are going to have the previous knowledge of this kind of vocabulary. So in the first one, we have that the atmosphere is the envelope of gases surrounding any celestial body. That is the atmosphere. Lo que nosotros conocemos como atmosfera, ¿verdad? Que es eh, que está rodeado de gases y que es, eh, rodea cualquier cuerpo celeste. Then we have the aurora, that is a band of light, also virtual solar particle. Es, ¿verdad? Una banda de luz causada por eh, partículas solares. Eh, then we have a basin, and that is a depression or deep in the Earth's surface. Es una depresión. Pero en este caso es eh, cuando hablamos de la Tierra o de eh, en sistemas de geografía, una depresión es un cambio, ¿verdad? En la superficie de la Tierra. So in that case, we are talking about a, eh, una depresión o un, una parte eh, onda, ¿verdad? En la superficie de la Tierra. Then we have a bay that is very common because in that case we are talking about an indentation and a shorter line smaller than a goal. Estamos hablando, ¿verdad?, de la bahía, que es una parte eh, más pequeña, ¿verdad?, que el golfo. Then we have the next one, and that is the biosphere, o la biosfera, que es una región de la Tierra donde existen, ¿verdad? Los organismos vivos. Then we have another one. And we have a capital. And in this case, we're not talking about the word or the letters in which we use the capital letter. In this case, we're talking about a, a space, a place. And it says that it's a city where a region's government is located. And we have the meaning that is kind of the same, capital. La capital de un país. Then we have a cavern. 
that its meaning is a large cave or a large chamber in a cave. Then we have that this one in Spanish means caverna. Then we have cliff. That means a step high face of rock. And it means acantilado. Then we have coast. That it means the shore of a sea or ocean. And it means costa. Then we have continent, that it means one of the large land masses of the earth. And this one means Continent. Then we have cosmography. And it means the science that maps the general features of the universe. And it means cosmografía. Then we have a country. The territory. Occupied by a nation. And it means I. Then we have a veil. But this one means an open valley in a hilly area. And this one means Valle o Cañada. Then we have Delta. But this one is a triangular area of alluvial deposits where a river divides.
And again, we are going to have the uh, Then we have desert. So this one means barren area. of landscape where little precipitation occurs. And this one is the desierto. Then we have view, but this one means water that has con condensed on a cool surface overnight. And this one is Rocio. Then we have June. That this means a uh, rich or of Sun created by the wine, by the wind. And it means tuna. Then we have east. That means the cardinal compass point that is at 90 degrees.
and it means este. Then we have the next one, and that is equator. That means an imaginary line around the Earth forming a great circle. This one is a kind of easy to understand that those oh that name is Ecuador o lo que conocemos como el Ecuador. Then we have erosion. That means this is the process of wearing or bringing something down. And in this case, we know that this word that has a, in Spanish is erosión. Then we have, let me see here one, we need to add more if we have a kind of long list. So we have here, the next one. But this one is pure. And it says it is a long, narrow inlet of the sea between the place. And it means or in Spanish, we can say this one is a Theodore. Then we have flood plain. And this one means that it's a low plain at the center of a river that is formed uh, chiefly of rivers, sediment, and is subject to flooding.
And in this case, we can say in Spanish that this one is a llanura de inundación. O también podemos llamarla llanura fluvial. Then we have fluvial. That this one means of uh, relating to or happening in a river. In the case, it means fluvial. Esto tiene que ver con los ríos. Then we have the next one that is fog. And it means droplets. of water, vapor suspended in the air near the ground. And in Spanish, this means niebla. Then we have frost. That means ice crystals forming a white deposit. Ice crystals forming. A white deposit. And in Spanish, this means escarcha. Then we have a gale. And this means a strong wind moving if I to fourteen knots. And in Spanish it means vendaval. Vendaval. Then we have geographer. That means an expert on geography. And it means geography. We're going uh, to write a couple of words more because we have a long list of words that we're going to use for this topic. But we are going just to read some words more and we are going to continue on the next uh, session because um, 
it's almost time, but we have just a couple of minutes. So we are going to write um, two or three more words and we are going to end the session. So remember that um, tomorrow we are not going to have like a session because we are going to end the session here for this week. So we have this one that is geographical. And it means of or relating to the science or geography. And this one means geographical. And the last one, and this is the last word that we are going to have for this vocabulary, for the first part of the vocabulary, uh, we are going to have this one. That is And it means a slowly moving mass of ice. And in this case, we can say glacier. So we have some words in order in this case, uh, because we are uh, writing for a uh, letter, because we are on alphabetical order. So we are going to end the session here. Uh, have a really good night and have a really good weekend. We are going to see each other on Monday because that is the uh, next session in which we're going to uh, begin and this uh, the week number three. And we are going to end with a, a vocabulary and uh, some sentences that we are going to create with that vocabulary. I know that it's time already, but this is uh, taking me out. So have a good night and see you on a Monday. Good night. Teacher. Thank you, Tisha. Bye. 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 Bye.